portfolio divided by its standard deviation. Okay. Then don't forget, 11 is going to go to 0. Where does 2 go to? So or Z is equal to 2 minus 11 all over 5, in this case, is the standard deviation for this portfolio B. So if we have a look at this, uh, what we end up with, well, 2 minus 11 gives us minus 9. So it's, it's minus 9 divided by 5. It's going to give us a value of it's it's minus 1.8 okay so from a standard normal perspective now the question is that we have is okay so from a standard normal perspective standard standard normal okay uh, we have that the probability okay don't forget 11 goes to zero uh, 2 went to minus 1.8 so the question is what is that probability in here what is that area in here okay uh, if i look that up on my tables you now my tables are cumulative so it only gives us positive z scores but when i flip it it's the same so i'm going to take it away from one so when i look at 1.8 on my tables i get 0 0.9641 0 0.9641 so the area to the left of minus 1.8 is 1 minus 0 0.9641 which gives us a value of uh, 0 0.0359 so in this case here Okay, for portfolio B, uh, the probability of a return being less than 2% okay, is equal to 0 0.0359, I suppose, which is approximately equal to 3.59%. So you will drop, and really what I'm saying is that we will drop below 2% per, uh, approximately 3.59% of the time. Okay? Keep in mind that with portfolio A, we'd only drop below 2%, 2.28% of the time. Okay? And then I suppose our final portfolio, which is which is portfolio portfolio C. Okay, so when we have a look at portfolio C, we do the same thing. So portfolio portfolio C. Okay. Well, its return. Where's it gone to? If I can find it here. Okay, there we go. Uh, its expected return is fourteen percent. Okay, so here we go. So its expected return is fourteen percent, and its standard deviation is equal to eight. Okay, it's sigma. Okay. And we want to know well, what's the probability of falling below 2%. Okay, what's the probability of falling below 2%? So once again, we need to standardize. And Z is equal to, let's say, the risk level, this this lower threshold that we're willing to accept, uh, minus the return of the portfolio divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio. So what happens with 2? What is 2 as a standard variable? What is 2 uh, as a Z score? So it's equal to uh, 2 minus 14. Okay, all over 8, which I suppose, so what does that give us? That gives us minus 12, so minus 12 divided by 8, so it's minus 12 divided by 8, gives us a value of minus 1.5, okay? So now, from a standard normal perspective, so from a standard normal perspective, our standard, our standard normal perspective, our standard normal perspective, what we have is, we have that the curve is now centered on zero because we standardized. Two goes to minus 1.5, minus 1.5. And the question is, what's the area over here? Okay. And once again, that's a tail area. So I need to take something away from one. I'm going to look up 1.5 on my tables. When I look up 1.5 on my tables, I get 0 0.9332. That's 0 0.9332. So when I take that away from one, one minus 0 0.9. 332 gives us a value of uh, 0 0.0668. In other words, what we're saying here is that the probability that the return of this portfolio uh, will fall below 2% is equal to 0 0.0668 or it's approximately 6.68%. So it'll fall below 2%, 6.68% of the time. Okay. Now what rise criteria says to us, okay, so that's the return here. Okay, for portfolios, so let's just have a look at this. So rise criterion, okay, rise criterion, okay, based on A, B, and C, portfolio A, B, and C, okay. Uh, well, for C, it's 6.68%. Uh, for, where's the other one gone? Uh, for for B, it's 3.59%, 3 okay. And for A, it's 2.28%, okay, that's for, that's for A. And what rise criterion tells us to do, let's keep that in mind, is it says select a minimum return level, okay, which is 2% in this case that we're willing to accept, that's our pain level, and to choose the portfolio that minimizes the risk of falling below this level. 
So you can see portfolio A will only fall below this level 2.28% of the time, B 3.59% of the time, and C 6.68% of the time. So based off rise criterion, we choose the portfolio that reduces our risk. And in this case, it's going to be, I think we can all agree on this, it's actually going to be portfolio. It's going to be portfolio A is the one that we're going to choose. Okay. So, guys, uh, once again, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and I hope that this video uh, was in some way intuitive. And more importantly, I hope that was helpful for you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.